I, I want to bring this up. The bioactives of colostrum are so important. So when I used to work in the industry where we made immunoglobulins, which were not, they were, we would use IgG, but usually it was a not purely made and artificial. Those were drugs. Yep, the oh. drugs. And I was one of the scientists that worked on different things like that. Um, it's really important that you help when you're treating different diseases or autoimmune disorders, chronic and acute. You need often these antibodies in the bloodstream that can really fight. And it's a first line defense. So, you know, anytime your body is approached by a virus, bacteria, parasites, heavy metals, you've got to have this defense. And I say this all the time, our bodies were naturally made to get rid and eradicate bad things and support good things. But the problem is we've been exposed to so many toxins and harmful things that sometimes our bodies won't block it and it crosses the barrier. And I say this all the time, once it's crossed that barrier and the epigenetic is unleashed and then this inflammatory cascade happens, it's a lot harder to reverse it. So I think one of the things that I wanna point out about colostrum, it's not just something to help you know, the body, the skin, the hair, but it's also something to help that day, not just reversing or not just your past and what you're dealing with, but for the future to block something that's trying to cross the barrier. Um, another thing I really do want to uh, point out is I worked, you know, for years in an industry where we would create something that's a human monoclonal antibody that would go in and target something negative to destroy it, which is one thing that they do with vaccines and antivirals. But, you know, those can end up hurting you, too. So from a perspective as a scientist, being able to give people a product that also is known to have lactoferrin, which is a, something that goes in. And again, this isn't synthetic. It naturally basically will recruit cells and it will get rid of disease causing particles. That was extremely important to me. Um, I could talk about growth factors all day long, but the first two before you even get into your regeneration properties of colostrum, those first two are really important, in my opinion, to an entire immune system and daily living. And when you look at the growth factors, right, when you start to get into tissue regeneration, and as we were talking about the collagen with the amino acids, which are cru crucial in that, when you, when you add in Restore for what it's working to do to also benefit the gut and kill off some of the mold and the fungus and such, create a good environment, but also the amino acid profile that's also found in Relive is going to be extremely complementary of working with those growth, fa growth factors or tissue regeneration or systemic regeneration. Absolutely. And I, I want to point this out because I'm scared I'm going to forget later. It may be in this deck. I'm, we're giving you guys a lot of information because we know that you want it. Um, so we're going to skip around a bit, but I wanted you guys to know, you know, a lot of your collagens and colostrums talk about how they help you lose weight, but then people notice they gain weight. And that's because there's so many additives. If you can take though the positive characteristics of colostrum and collagen and not add these other synthetics, you really have something known to really support the body and functioning at an optimal level where your body naturally is burning more and getting rid of more fat cells, et cetera. And, and actually turning those into something that's that's productive for the for the body, which I think is which one is muscle. Or yeah, connective tissue. Which collagen is really good at that because collagen goes in and through its bioactive components, and I know, you know, it it helps heal and it helps promote the growth as well. So I think, you know, glycerin, which is one of the main things in the in the collagen. Glycine. Glycine. Sorry. So we glycerin. can go to the next slide. We yeah, we need to go a little bit quicker because there's so many. Um, I can't even say it because you know how I am glycine. <laughs> Well, it's like running with the wolf pack. I know. Glutathione, I can probably say. Glutathione? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can you say sternocleidomastoid? No. Oh. I can say proximal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. <laughs> that took me that's two a win years. for most. I worked for that company. It took me two years to even say it. Um, what I know is glutathione, and he knows, it, it's very important to produce that in the body. And one of the main bioactives, glycine, or I can't say it. Oh, you did it. Um, is the one that really helps the body do that and produce it, which really helps with stress, damage, and DNA, protecting the proteins, protecting that. You guys know when I talk about DNA, you've got genetics, and then you've got this epigenetic. You really have got to protect your body. You know, one of the things that was huge for me when all this stuff came out with everything going on was knowing that 
there are different things that can cause these epigenetics. And then your imprinting of the DNA is carried out generationally. It was really important to me to find different things that could protect people's bodies. And I say this all the time, you've got to produce these blockades, right? So this is one of the blockades I'm always talking about. If you can have the body produce these amino acid essentials that will really help fight these radicals and protect the body against the damage, against the outside attacks, you can really have something that works effectively. And I always say this, of course, I'm, I'm concerned about nutrition and the skin and the hair, which is proline and everything that goes along with the synthesis of that. But I think your main component, you can go back to this and I want to go back to it again. Glutathione, when you use that, we know it was one of the components that was used to really fight certain viruses, right? So when you saw a lot of people come out with that during the current pandemic, that's why. And I saw amazing data and everyone kept talking to me about it. And I was like, well, we have some of it in the products we have currently, but we have something else coming out that's a very strong key component. Of and that. the key the key thing with glutathione, when you look at it, is glutathione is not something you want to take as an IV. It's not something mm -hmm. that you want to take as a supplement. It's what, what you need to do is put the body in a position where it can start producing it. There's a little secret. Glutathione production is shut off in the body by mercury. So the one heavy metal that is primarily glutathione's focus to remove is also the heavy metal that shuts off your body's ability to produce it because it is that nefarious. So as you're starting to remove the mercury, i.e. clean slate, and you add in glycine from Give Me Back My Youth, and you add in the other amino acid profile that is yeah. provided in Relive Greens in conjunction with the, the little components of the bioavailable silica found in clean slate, you're cleaning out your system, you're providing the key components that your body needs to produce endogenous glutathione and turn on that glutathione factory that we are. It's just creating the right healthy environment because you can't supplement with something that your body should be producing naturally, much like taking a lot of hormones that if you, if you take a lot of hormones, you're actually telling your body not to produce it anymore because it begins to think you're going to continually provide it. That's true. And, and doctors that give hormones don't usually say that. It's okay to take hormones, but you need to understand that. Once you start taking them, then your body really shutting off that mechanism. And um, it's, you know, it, it's really important that you understand all of these things you can be given in an IV, which Clayton and I have a little bit of a different opinion. And I saw Verna's uh, text about that. There's different opinions about whether you should have an IV or you should take something daily. The reason he said that in about, about an IV is you have to be careful anytime you put something into your system directly. And now I've worked on a lot of IV formulas. So sometimes you need that, but to daily build up different things in your body and to promote the body to naturally do things it needs to do by giving it the right key ingredients, we know long-term it is better. Short-term, sometimes it's okay to do different types of, of IVs, but long-term, like with quercetin and NAD, which is in one of our products we're gonna launch this year, it's, it's, I've done IVs before and I've loved them, but it's important to do stuff daily so you can build it up in the system and it can support the system. So for example, uh, hydroxyproline, which is the last one that's on here, if you really look at that, it decreases the fine lines and wrinkles. So you could use that also in different formulas that are given through an IV. Um, they don't usually have that on the IV, but they use a component of it. But to really long-term affect your body, you want to continuously give stuff. And, you know, I want to point this out because I don't want people not to know this people are going to use this on their skin. And when they say that they do notice a huge difference, absolutely, they're going to notice that we're not promoting it for skin, but we already have a lot of people like Birgit um, and different individuals that, are, that have contacted us, I think Sophie and Regina, that have really liked it on their skin. So how would you, how would you do that if you, were, if you were going to make just a, like a little nighttime serum, say with, um, we'll just say a little bit of give me back my youth, and maybe a, a drop or so of clean slate yeah and would you just make I mean, a little could, bit of a paste yeah and but just... you, you could even use apple cider vinegar you could use your restore with it uh you could also do the relip which grace. there's apple cider vinegar yeah. in restore to help create some of them yeah 
quantum nano emulsions that you do in there. Once you add that, if you add it, especially, and if you look so at you're Restore, opening up yeah, if you, and Restore, I'm going to tell you guys, I, I hate to keep going back to this, but Restore for my face, because of all the issues I have, you guys that saw me in Europe probably noticed it was coming back a little bit, one of the spots on my nose, because I had so much cancer. If I don't put Restore on it, and we can't promote it for that, but if I don't, it comes back and Clay knows it. Um, so I just have to constantly do that. Restore is a major great thing for me. And I think it's because of the black cumin seed, the aloe vera, which is known to heal, um, and the resveratrol, um, you know, the raspberry. I mean, it's just a fantastic formula. So if you took a little bit of that with a little curcumin. bit of give me back my youth and maybe a drop of clean slate, did that and just gave yourself a little. But even if you just use, just so you guys know, an olive oil, uh, olive oil or avocado oil, it would act as a kind of catalyst too, and it would help. So you could just put it around the eyes, or put it around your mouth, um, or put it, you know, around your hairline. Hold on, if you, if you do it <laughs> just with avocado oil with a little bit of give me back my youth, you could give yourself a mustache. You could also eat it. Yeah, we Do want you know to that it, it tastes so good that some people are eating it just by the spoon? I know because it's so silky smooth and it tastes like the greatest <laughs> vanilla milkshake you've ever had in your life. 